name is Connie, that's Matt, Babacher, and Erica, and we are exploring the killer applications in NetBase. So NetBase uses social media analysis tools to analyze consumer <coughs> insights, behavior, emotion online, and we were tasked with analyzing online content about mobile applications. And also to design the next killer mobile app based on our results. The mobile application market is a large sector, it's a fast growing sector. Um, on the Y axis, we have mobile application users in millions. And in 2009, there were about 38 million users. It has steadily increased over the years. So there are about 136 million users in 2012, expected to grow to about 255 million users in the next few years in 2015. Mobile applications are used on smartphones and tablets, kind of like the one here. And we did, um, we used NetBase, we did a general uh, query on the top five devices. And then we ran individual searches to see how they rank in the brand action index. So the bigger the bubble here shows the larger amount of sound bites. And the further to the right shows the higher amount of passion and intensity. Um, if it's higher up, it shows that it's generally liked more and it's disliked more when it's a little lower. So as you can see, the iPad and the iPhone have the most amount of consumer insights and they're also the most passionate. People love the iPad and iPhone on the iOS platform. There's also two Android devices, Samsung Galaxy and HTC, that has a generally positive sentiment, and the BlackBerry is a little more negative. We then want to see what are some top five categories. We use Nielsen Online to see the most popular categories, and then ran uh, searches on NetBase to see how they rank in the brand passion index. And we see that music, maps, games, and social networking has the most buzz. They're the most talked about online. Music is more passionate. Um, they're loved more. Uh, maps and games are generally positive, and social networking has more of a negative sentiment. So of the five, social networking has the most negative sentiments. We then wanted to look and see what are some top individual apps. So we separated the apps and looked at them, and we see that even though music was such a big category, there's so much buzz, it was talked about so much. There's not really a music app that we see. The closest thing is YouTube, and it's not as large. And when we looked at games, we saw that there's only one game that shows up as a top 10 individual app, Angry Birds, and it's not as large either. And even though Maps was such a large category, it's not even on the top 10 individual apps. So this leads us to believe that <coughs> even though music, Maps, and games are such a big category, there's not one single app that dominates that area. There's a lot of apps, it's highly saturated from a lot of competition. We do see that Twitter and Facebook are the, the main two main players out of the top 10 apps, and they belong to the category of social networking. However, they are more negative. So the other ones are generally positive, but Twitter and Facebook are more negative even though they're the largest players. This shows us that there is room for improvement. It's a big category, it's one of the top categories, but it's most, mostly negative. We then want to see what are some top 10 likes and top 10 dislikes. What people are liking about the apps and what they're disliking about it. We look on the left here, our likes, and we see that three is a huge component. It's positive, it's a perk. People like the fact that apps are free. And also we see um, there's some other categories that fit under usability. It works well, it works fine, it's fast, it works great, it's useful. Those make up another 43% of the chart. So in the top apps, uh, uh, sorry, on the top likes, about 80% show that people like the fact it's free and it works well. Under top 10 dislikes, it's mostly related to usability issues. Actually, about 89% of the pie has to do with the fact that 
there's a problem, it doesn't work, it acts up, it's broken, it's dysfunctional. That makes up about 89% of our dislikes. And the remainder, 11%, has to do with cost. It's not free, it's expensive. So we see on our top likes and dislikes that most people like the fact that apps are free and that it works. So we want to look more into the free category. It was such a large cut of our pie, and so we did a comparison to see um, kind of what the difference was between free and paid apps. So we, looked, we did a general um, sentiment chart and compared free apps and paid apps. You can see the red right here shows negative sentiment, and the green shows positive sentiment. And free apps has an overwhelmingly um, a huge perk. It's a big deal. People like the fact that apps are free. And then we did, we wanted to look at behavior, and we did a comparison between free apps and paid apps, and saw that free apps are installed more and used more than paid apps. So what we learned from NetBase is that the Apple iOS is the most popular platform. Apple iPad, that's the most talked about. It's what people are, there's a lot of buzz for it, and it's generally very passionate. People like this. And when we looked at the top categories, maps, music, games, and social networking showed up as the top categories, but social networking is largely negative. There's a large negative sentiment. <coughs> and when we looked at top likes and dislikes, uh, we see that free and usability are very important mobile app features and that consumers are more positive about free apps, which are installed and used more than paid apps. Here you go. Thanks, Melanie. All right, so the next killer mobile app, as we talked about, the key takeaway is that this map app needs to be free and it needs to be easy to use. We also think, based on our research, that the iOS platform with the iPad and the iPhone are the logical choice. And then we think that social networking is a large white space opportunity because of the negative sentiments. And so with that, we create a networkable, a mobile event networking application for professionals. To look at it, in the school of management, we're taught three things. To be successful in business, you need to network. 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 <laughs> we're going to do that again. All right. We're taught three things. We're going to network. 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 Right. <laughs> so we know for, to, to do proper networking, we need to be on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And so we, our research earlier showed us how net, uh, Twitter and Facebook are negatively, have negative sentiments. We didn't see LinkedIn. And so we wanted to do general queries about networking in general and also LinkedIn. And so as you can see, it's a little counterintuitive to me, but networking is positive. People like it. People love it. This small group right here, I think, represents most students who have a strong uh, apprehension, if you will, towards handing out business cards because they haven't learned the skills yet. And also, when we looked at just LinkedIn in general, you can see that it's positive. People really like using LinkedIn, especially for, especially for professional networking and the strong sentiment. And so we then decided to do queries to see, well, let's look at the mobile issues. And so we did networking and LinkedIn mobile, and as you can see, there's a huge opportunity for a device that can enhance networking. Because people really love it, but they just don't do it enough. And LinkedIn especially is a very the number one professional networking tool, but it's not very mobile. It's more designed to be a desktop item. And so we wanted to create an application that helped enhance that capability. And so we created a story. So meet Maria. Maria is an ambitious young marketing analyst. As an introvert, she doesn't rejoice in having to put herself out there to a bunch of strangers, but knows how important it is to connect with like-minded marketing professionals. She hears about this next new app, Networkable, which allows her to do research, to register for an upcoming marketing conference and start reaching out to other new women attendees. So she downloads the app on her iPad and iPhone. As she wants to register, she can search easily for location, industry, or keywords. The key being that this is easy to use and it's free. As she's registering for this thing, the networkable application allows her to reg first register for the event, but then also see who else is attending. 
if somebody's available for networking, then she's able to send them a message beforehand to say, hey, can we get together for lunch or coffee and talk about the event? I'd like to reach out and meet you. If, if they're unavailable, then there's no name that comes up. And so you, you see whether or not somebody's available. And so it's kind of a, a nice little, you have, you have to buy in in order to, to be talked about. And also on here, you're, you're able to populate your Twitter handle, your LinkedIn address, and all your background information. And this information carries with you for the next events, and so that's how the database grows. During the event, Maria gets the mobile application, networkable app, allows Maria to look at the agenda. So she can see all the different breakout sessions that are happening. She gets to check in to the one that's going on right now. And she also gets to rate the different modules she just attended. Instantly, within the same feature, we get to see who else is attending the same event and who is unavailable. So if Maria sees that Malcolm is available, she can send him an instant message during the event saying, hey, that's a great point. You know, I think you did a really good job on that panel just five minutes ago. So on and so forth. And she also wants to thank, thank Jeff for, for attending. Um, some of the key, oh, sorry, some of the key takeaways from a business standpoint of why this is really a good app is the fact that there's communication, enhanced communication from the event organizer to the group of attendees. They get to, you know, post information. They can, it can be as, as fun as a trivia game for, hey, whoever finds this, you know, whoever signs up right now gets a certain prize. So there's more buy-in and more attentive behavior. You get to see instant market research feedback from who checked into an event, what their ratings were, and then also there's a green sustainability issue here. Not having to print out 200 copies of something like a presentation um, saves money and it saves time and it's easy. So now I'm going to turn it over to Prabhakar. Thanks, Matt. So as Connie talked about the networking insight, net-based insights that we need to know about our new product, the app, Networkable, and and Matt talked about how it's about the application software, new uh, networking app. I'm going to be talking about the four P's of marketing. Those are product, which is networkable, price, this is for free, and third place. We are developing it for the mobile devices, and in that way you can take it anywhere, everywhere you want. And promotion, we're going to start with the businesses that are holding these kind of networking events. So. As marketing professionals, we all know there's one more important P, and that is people. So we are trying to find those people out in the market who would be willing to use our network app starting from the beginning. And for that, we were targeting the very first category here is young achievers that fall into the age group of 25 to 44. And those can be two categories, young digitality and up and comers. They tend to be more tech savvy and open commerce people are more into their active lifestyle. By this, we are trying to target 1.4 million households under young data writing and 1.5 million households under open commerce. And just to see if our uh, findings and the late base uh, insights are in sync, we did a kind of small survey. We surveyed students at School of Management and the results, uh, uh, the results were quite interesting to look at it just in order to you know, develop our product in a better way to see what kind of features they're looking for, what kind of price they would be willing for at all if they want to. And some of the questions we asked them were, have you been using any um, networking app product already besides LinkedIn? And then we asked them questions about what kind of features would you like to see? How do you rate those features? And then I would like to share some of the facts here when we ask them, would you be interested in a new business networking app which would allow you to connect to the people attending the same networking event as you are? And the result shows about 80% of the people said yes. The second interesting point was, would you be interested in such an app which would allow you to know about your potential, potential uh, contacts in the event, right there in the event? if you couldn't do enough research beforehand, before meeting those uh, networking professionals. And the result so shows over 80% of the people said yes, they are interested in such an app. And the last fact I would like to share here is when we ask them about to 
about how much they would be willing to pay for such an app. And then, as we already saw, 60% of the people said they would like it for free. But there is an astonishing result which shows here that about 40% of the people would be willing to pay about $1 or more than that. So that's one thing we are going to use it to, to forecast our product life cycle when we, when we move into the subsequent phases of our product, like from introduction to mature phase and the further phases. So the survey results were quite interesting. And moving on to our next target segment, we have here is the established professionals that fall under the age group of 45 to 64. And they can be two groups under this. They are money and brains and executive suites. By doing money and brains people tend to be more from the upper management and executive suites are people who are in the midlife success phase. And by doing this, we are targeting 2.3 million households under money and brains and 1.1 million households under executive suite. So by targeting these four subcategories, we are kind of targeting about 7 million, million people. And if you compare the number to the number of users on LinkedIn, it's like about 150 million. million. So we are kind of interested in targeting those people who are already tech savvy, who have been attending a lot of networking events on a regular basis. So those would be our first people to be using our networkable app. And then here is the positioning of our networkable product. For up and coming and established professionals, Networkable is a social app that helps build real-time connections on the go. Only Networkable believes that networking should be simple and fun. So I'd like to share a couple of more facts. I'm sure there will be a lot of people who are curious to know about that. How, how are you uh, going to invest in a new app? When are you going to launch it? So just to answer those cur curious questions, we're going to start with $20,000 as our initial investment, the prize money out of this competition. And the tentative date to launch the beta product is by the end of 2012, when you would hear the buzz, networkable. 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 <laughs>